boys remember the last time we was in the stadium on Monday night? Y'all know how much fun we had? Hey, let's turn it up now. Thursday night football returns to Nissan Stadium and the Titans find themselves a solid underdog. Garoppolo takes the snap, firing, intercepted by Jack Rabbit Jenkins. Jack Rabbit! Fires down the middle, pass is intercepted. There it is! Gives Foreman at left guard, pounding into the end zone. Touchdown! Titan! There's a touchdown! And he'll drop. Pressure coming. He fires downfield. Touchdown! Titan! Arthur! One! Brown! Welcome home! Snap! Set! Kick! Stadium. I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. The head coach and I are together, but we're not quite together. I'm here, and he is at St. Thomas Sports Park. Mike Vrabel, thanks so much for joining us. We understand all the COVID requirements and everything we have to do to keep everybody safe. So I'm glad you're there and doing well, and hope you had a great weekend with your family. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. We will have a uh, fantastic show. I know that we will we will give the people what they want tonight. Well, what they want is to see big plays from the win over San Francisco. But before we even get to the six packs, and we have two, we've got to look at the play that you told Jackrabbit Jenkins in the locker room saved the game. This came early on. Well, we were um, we were le leaking some oil, and uh, you know, Rabbit came through, and that was a lot of uh, film study and preparation. You know, we knew that they had run a lot of those seven stops or corner stops and um, obviously wanting Kittle and uh, he sat on it and he didn't take off for the back of the end zone and he sat down and you know was able to not only make the play but catch it and you could see Kittle trying to break it up right there. So that's huge to be able to come down with that catch. So the Titans only down seven to nothing at that point, only down 10 to nothing at the intermission. But as we go to the six pack, we've got six good plays from the third quarter. The first third down, a third and 15, Mike. Well, we, we want to stay out of those situations, but, uh, you know, we were able to protect Ryan, give him a great pocket, and, and Nick Westbrook's able to sit down there in the, in the middle of the field. There was some space there in their zone, and, you know, you see him drop step and, and really get vertical and, that's a 24-yard gain on third and 15. Westbrook Aquina finishes the game two catches for 38 yards. A.J. Brown had a massive second half and had a number of third down catches. Eight in the game. Here's one. Well, we do it, you know, just a good enough job. And, you know, A.J. breaks away there from the linebacker who's matching him. And, and there's a lot of trust there. Ryan's able to deliver it. And, you know, if we can take care of the quarterback and clean out the middle of the pocket, you know, we got a chance. That helps set up a field goal for the Titans. It's 10 to 3 at this point. After the kickoff, the first play for the 49ers, disaster for San Francisco. Yeah, we, we made a little correction and, you know, adjustment there at halftime. We were able to tip a ball, but, you know, switched in and started playing a little bit of man coverage, and, and he floated that one against the man, and, and Amani was able to come out of the middle of the field and, and make a play on it, but guys doing up front, getting a hand on it, and that ball sailing. First interception of the year for Amadi Hooker, fifth of his Titans career. Sets up Tennessee at the 18-yard line. Three plays later, how about a little Deontay Foreman? Yeah, well, three runs. You know, Jeremy got us down there. We ran hard. We went in there with Foreman, gave Jeremy a blow, unfortunately. And, you know, you can see pretty much untouched into the end zone. And, and Ryan knew right away it was a touchdown. So I thought that was a really cool three-play series right there, um, being able to hit three runs and, and make them positive and push the pile and make them physical. And now it's a new ball game at 10 to 10. San Francisco goes on a bit of a drive and they say, 
We're in Titans territory. It's fourth down. We're going to go, but they don't make it. Yeah, I just thought that this was a good call. We mixed up in here some zone. Um, you know, you can see Jimmy kind of not really be sure where to go with the football. And uh, receiver doesn't know if he wants him to keep running or, or sit down. And you know, so I just thought that that was uh, a well-timed, well-executed call. And there's Jeffrey Simmons showing up again, Mike. Well, just trying to find a football. If he can't get there, he's going to do everything he can to, to disrupt it. Um, he got pressure on the first play of the game. You know, made a quarterback slide off the spot. So he's been, uh, he's been great for us. And then the last play of the third quarter, one that all Titans fans will remember, the third and 23 freebie. Well, you know, we got him to jump off sides and, um, you know, something that we've been working on. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I think that we've been coaching it hard and, you know, we, we, we got it and players were able to hit it. We snapped it and uh, got the protection that we needed and then, you know, take the chance to, to AJ and, and obviously his strength down the field and we're able to come up with a huge play. Titans will start the fourth quarter on the 30 yard line of the 49ers in what is a 10 to 10 game. When we come back, another six pack, a six pack of plays from the fourth quarter. Stay tuned for more excitement on the Mike Brable Show. The third quarter saw the Tennessee Titans put 10 points on the board, 10 more in the fourth quarter, but it took some third down magic to make it happen. As we look at our second six pack, this is a third and 10 from the 30 yard line of San Francisco. Well, you see Ryan got a little bit of pressure. He's able to drift there to his left and, you know, we got DJ coming into, the, into his vision and, you know, short of the sticks. And then we, we count on AJ to be able to break a tackle and, and get forward. So great job of Ryan keeping his eyes downfield and, and being able to extend the play. AJ Brown with a 12 yard pickup. It's first and 10 at the 18 yard line. So why not just go back to AJ Brown? How about yeah, that? Let's take a you know, clean pocket. You know, again, Dylan runs and by, you know, Dylan runs Bosa by and with a clean pocket comes usually completions. And, you know, this is great to see. We, we have to be able to do this. Um, to, to marry with our run game. And, uh, you know, I just felt like it was well executed, obviously, and you know, clean pocket and Ryan trusting him, looking off the safety, and then, you know, being able to rip it in there. He absolutely ripped that throw. Whoo! That's what I just said, Mike. I know! But I was just watching. I'm thinking, there's some smoke on that thing. You know, I think that there was a lot of trust there the other night, and, and I thought that, you know, when you throw the ball on third and 15 over the middle, um, I thought there was, I thought those were good balls as well. You know, I mean, those can't be some, some soft balls that um, rainbow in there. That has got to be ripped in there or guys are going to be breaking on it. So we had a couple of those the other night as well. How about some defense? How about some pass rush? How about some Bud Dupree sacks in back-to-back -back games? Well, you know, Bud's able, you know, I think the coverage is really good here, but what you see is Bud being able to get into the pocket, um, get him off the spot. You know, I thought that obviously when, now, this would be more of a coverage sack. If quarterback pumps it, we got to be there. And uh, sometimes the rush wins and sometimes the coverage wins. And uh, you know, this one they both did. 17-17, 220 remaining in the game. The Titans get the ball back. With 120 to go, the Titans have the ball at their own 46-yard line. And Ryan Tannehill doing some Ryan Tannehill things. Yeah, they, they rushed by the quarterback and they were all back in, you know, man coverage. And, you know, he saw it open up and, it, you know, this is what he gives you. This is what he gives you is the ability to uh, extend plays, get downfield and and not be afraid to take a, a hit from a safety. And, you know, you see Jeremy McNichols getting an extra block. You see Nick Westbrook running in there to try to take some steam off of Norman. And, you know, that that was obviously a huge play for us to gain, you know, the, the yardage needed to get down there in the field goal range. And so at that point, the Titans are able to run three more plays, pick up five yards, force San Francisco to use their final timeouts. You call the timeout with nine seconds to go and send Randy Bullock out. Yep, and uh, and Rand, you know Randy hit a good, good, solid, straight ball. I don't think there was any indecision on his part, um, and uh, just just happy for Randy and what he's been able to do for us. And you know, you can see obviously everybody uh, is, is excited for him to to help us win. So Bullock 
is good from 44. Four seconds remain. Jimmy Garoppolo completes a quick one to the very dangerous Debo Samuel, and then the fun begins. No kidding, and they're just going to hold, and they're going to do whatever, and, you know, might as well just do this instead of throwing a Hail Mary. Everybody grabs somebody and, you know, pitch it around. But, you know, at the end of the day, everybody stays home, and, you know, we, we have to do, uh, you know, we have to do all everybody has to do their job. And, you know, again, it, whether we think that Kittle was down or, you know, they backed up some yardage and ran out of people to, to pitch it to. So um, that, that's a long play. Uh, just like to, to find a way to win the game. Were you ever nervous during that? I always get nervous. Yeah, me too. When the ball being pitched around and, you know, but you know, you're going to have to defend, you know, one more play. So whether we squib it and they kneel on it, there's only going to be two seconds that comes off. They're still going to have to, uh, you know, you're still going to have to defend one of those. Well, you did, and you won the ball game, and you got nervous about that, but you're never nervous when it's time for Delta Dentals. Can you guess this, Titan? You're always confident, forthright, excited. All of those sorts of things are a big part of your game. Let's take a look at this Titan, can you guess this Titan? You get a look before we go to break. That uh, we're, we're breaking protocol here. We're, are we going through a, a face mask? Is that what we're doing now, Ashley? More Mike Vrabel show with Delta Dentals. Can he guess this Titan? Next. Sure, there's pressure. Monday night football, Thursday night football, Sunday games. Mike Vrabel can handle that, but can he handle the pressure of naming the Titan on the Delta Dental? Can you guess this Titan? Where are you going with this, Michael? I don't, I don't know, but I, obviously this, this person has been to Delta Dental. Their teeth are immaculate. They're immaculate. beautiful. Um, I, I don't even have a guess other than to say Kevin Byard. Kevin Byard, pro bowler. Chester Rogers, Chester former. Rogers. Do you know he was a child actor? Yes, yes. You and I mean he was in some real stuff too. He says yeah. he's going to go back to acting after football's over. Act like a slot receiver and a punt returner and <laughs> kickoff. And we'll be all set. Well, he's doing that pretty well, Coach. You got to. He's had a nice year. I know, and uh, it was great to, to to have him break that opening kickoff, and uh, we, we just got to get him going on these punt returns. You know, we just got to keep going and forcing him to punt. And, uh, and giving us a chance. He's one of those people you love having in this locker room. I mean, worked hard for a year to get off the practice squad, come back from injury, and has really made a nice contribution. Good guy, good part of this football team. Good natured, you know what I mean? Has uh, really uh, given us everything that we've wanted from, from him and, you know, helps us out, obviously, uh, in the slot and, you know, really, really done a good job. I know that there's you know, he hasn't been without mistake, but who hasn't uh, returning those punts? And so, you know, hopefully he can help us out here down the stretch. All right, Michael, when we come back, it's time to go Titans files. Kevin Byard was the guest there. He's actually going to be the host of this segment coming up with Amy Wells. That, you see what I mean? That's where I made a mistake. I knew something was going on. You read it out of order. That's right. The Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show. The Titans secondary came up big last Thursday night in the win over San Francisco. And thanks to some outstanding coaching and a lot of guys filling in in different spots and stepping up at big moments, the Titans secondary has largely come through big all year. In this week's Titans files, Amy Wells goes to the team's pro bowler, Kevin Byard, to get thoughts and insight on the men who make up the Titans secondary. Stick together no matter what happens. They're going to make plays, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, stick together throughout every day, we're going to make plays. 17 different defensive backs have appeared in a game this season for the Tennessee Titans. That's 17. For secondary coach Anthony Midget and safeties coach Scott Booker, that has meant some serious mixing and matching of personnel. Not only have injuries factored into it, but so do specific schemes and specific skill sets that fit those schemes. Kevin Byard has been the obvious constant as he had stellar play throughout the season. The other constant will surprise you. It's rookie nickelback Elijah Molden. Molden has factored into both run defense and pass defense. 
he sure has impressed buyers with his work. For a guy like him to come in and to play our nickel position is already tough. You have to do a lot of communicate. You have to be able to play linebacker sometimes and also cover like a DB. He's done a great job. But another thing that I think is even better that he's just physical. He'll go in there and throw himself in there with the offensive lineman and go out there and make plays. Buster Screen has been a key addition to the secondary since arriving just over a month ago. But the cornerback who has made the most plays this season for the Titans is Christian Fulton. In spite of missing four games in October and November, the second year man from LSU has made locking up receivers what his season has been all about. Number one, just last year, you know, with the injury that he had, you know, especially being a rookie man, you need those reps. You need to be out there playing games. I think this year having a full off season, He's having a really great year, and uh, I expect him to keep rising up because, I mean, I think he's a rising star in this league. Byard also loves to discuss his running mate at safety, Amani Hooker. Hooker was out of the lineup with injury for the majority of the first half of the season, but as he has gotten back into a groove in recent weeks, Hooker is showing up more and more. Garoppolo's going to throw it. Fires down the middle of the pass. It's intercepted. It is! Hooker's range and closing speed are two of his best assets, and they are becoming more and more evident as we head down the stretch. One thing that's really underrated, obviously he's a great athlete, but he's a really smart player. I think he'll have a super long career in this league because just the intangible that he has, great confidence. I'm just happy to see him out here having success because I remember he was drafted as a rookie and he was just playing in little small packages and stuff like that. Now he's taking a full year of being a starter. And then I talked to him about, you know, it's different when you're only playing three, 400 snaps a year. Now you're probably going to play a thousand snaps. Love playing with him, money. Love playing with him. Another guy that Kevin Byard loves playing with is 33-year-old Jackrabbit Jenkins. Until an injury at New England, Jenkins had been a rock for the Titans over the season's first three months. Byard says that Jackrabbit is more than a veteran cornerback. Jenkins also helps his team by bringing a little bit of levity. Just being in the locker room, he's a really funny guy. He's always making jokes in the, in the meeting rooms. Just been a joy to be around. The Titans have spent the majority of the season without a guy that they hoped would be a big contributor by now, first round draft pick Caleb Farley. Being a savvy vet, Bayard predicts a big jump for Farley in year two, much like the jump Christian Fulton made from last season to now. The intangibles that he has, I mean, the speed, the size, he has everything that you would want out of a corner, he's fast. I think coming off the injury and stuff like that, he's gonna have a really long off season. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna be talking to him about just understanding, just attacking that process, the, the rehab, attack, just as much you did when you was coming off of the combine or whatever. You have to make sure that your body and your mind is right because next year I really feel like in the second year, he can really take a huge step and be the guy that they seen when they draft him first round. So last weekend, I got Calls, texts, emails, all kinds of things from friends wanting to know who should we be pulling for this weekend to help the Titans? Well, let's start off with the Las Vegas Raiders beating the Colts, Cincinnati knocking off Kansas City. Those would both be helpful, as would Jacksonville beating New England and the Rams downing Baltimore. And finally, it would help the Titans if Denver beat the L.A. Chargers. Those five teams could help the Titans this weekend. But how could the Titans be best served? Knocking off the Dolphins. Mike Vrabel is back with his Nissan Keys when the Mike Vrabel Show continues next. The Mike Vrabel Show winds down as we get ready for the game Sunday with Miami. Time for Mike's Nissan Keys to success. Got to tackle somebody on Sunday. Isn't that key number one, Mike? Yeah, you know, we, we weren't as good as what we had been the previous weeks last week. And, you know, they've got some really good skill players and guys that are really good with the football in their hand. Waddle and Gusecki and Gaskin, obviously, and, and the quarterbacks can, can move. So, you know, it all comes down to tackling for us to be able to be sure and, and aggressive tacklers on defense. Key number two, take care of Tannehill. Is that a way to sum it up? Well, I think we've we've all sh proven to ourselves that we can, you know, do really well in the passing game if if we give our quarterback clean pockets and places and platforms to throw it from. So, you know, continue to do that. These guys are going to pressure. Uh, they they blitz um, and they blitz from all over, and then they're very good on third down. And and uh, it, it'll be important that we we keep those edge rushers on the edge and 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 not get beat inside out. Nissan key to success number three. Give me one about special teams, if you would, Mike. 
Well, it just, you know, fundamentally sound in our returns are just making sure that we're getting back. We're getting on the right guy with too many mistakes, you know, last week, if they, they cross a guy or, you know, they, they switch uh, and, and then you got to be able to, to get North and South and, and be able to use this as a weapon down the stretch. So hopefully we can, we can let Chet, um, who we highlighted earlier, you know, get going and, and have some success there. Mike, as always, thanks so much for the time. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for making this work. All right. On Sunday, kickoff is set for noon. We're on the air at 104.5 The Zone at 11 a.m. We hope you'll join us. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. We'll see you next time.